I said, this is not anti-corporation. This is not anti this is this is this is pro ordinary citizens having their constitutional rights upheld. It's that simple. You know? I mean corporate, corporate go make your money, go hire people, do what you do, that's fabulous. But you are not a person. You are not a person. We are people here, and we are the ones who should determine, you know, what our laws are. We are the ones who should determine our elections. You know, not you, not artificial entities, and that's that's what it is. But we need we, what we have work to do here in the delegation. Um, yes. Um, the change in the constitution is many in the constitution Right, so the question for those who made it in here is, what's the process of amending the Constitution? Does it have to go through the federal uh, Congress first? And actually, Article 5 of the Constitution provides two routes for amending the Constitution. One is uh, through the states, where the states can call for a constitutional convention bypassing Congress, uh, and then the delegates selected by each state going to that convention vote on uh, those amendments that get proposed to the convention that get sent back to the states for ratification. You still need three quarters of the states to ratify. The other route is to go through Congress, two thirds of the Congress passing a bill, amendment bill, sending it to the states for ratification for three quarters of the states to ratify. We have amended the Constitution, as I mentioned, 27 times before, all through that other route. In other words, all those amendments came through Congress. We've only had one convention in our nation's history, that was the first. 1787, we've never had a constitutional <coughs> convention to amend the Constitution. That being said, the 17th Amendment, which changed the election of senators from state legislators to the people, was done in part by the threat of a constitutional convention. We are not at Free Speech or People engaged in calling for a convention. I know maybe there's some other voices out there in this movement who have done so, but by and large, the groups that we've worked with are not engaged in that. They're focused in the congressional route. Uh, partly because when you have a constitutional convention, you open it up to other amendments that can propose. And, you know, uh, we're not necessarily interested in moving backwards on questions of, uh, uh, that have already been established uh, with our constitution. So we're, we're for the route that the congressman is leading us on through Congress, and, and that's, I think, the route that ultimately we can uh, get to. And you know what? It may not, it may not happen in this two-year time frame. The congressman may be back uh, here, you know, in 2015, reintroducing these amendment bills. We lowered the voting age from 21 to 18 in less than two years, albeit in the midst of a Vietnam War, um, you know. But the fact is there are other amendments that took longer. And we don't have any crystal balls how long is this going to take, but we do know there are going to be scandals that come out of this. Senator McCain has already talked about the fact this is going to lead to more and more scandals, and each one of those is going to propel further this movement for people to take back our democracy. So it may it may not be two years, maybe five, maybe ten, but we've got to start that fight. You know, Senator, late Senator Paul Wilson says, you never win a fight unless you start it. And this is a fight we have to start. Thank you. signatures for question four, the one uh, that asked for an amendment yeah. for, you know, uh, corporate heading, corporate personhood, and money is free speech. So it's very heartening to see both of these issues coming up. Um, and there's a number of other people in the room that were involved, too. Yes, yeah, thank you for your work on that. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of curious. There's some of the thinking in the, in the broader movement, too, um, where they submit that um, it might be, uh, geez, how would I phrase it? Um, good to have it in one amendment, um, and just the fear is like kind of the dividing and conquering, um, you know, kind of early on, if they're separate um, early on, then one's more likely to get kind of shot down. Um, but you had spoken to the, the possibility of maybe joining them at some point. So I was kind of curious of like what conditions that would be, how you'd see that playing out, and then maybe how like folks at the grassroots can help kind of, you know, maybe help uh, blow the wind in that direction. Well, obviously, I think I have the best ideas. Uh, uh, that's why I use these two. But I, I, I don't have, you know, a monopoly on good ideas. Um, and um, you know, and uh, but the way I, the way, the way this is now unfolding is that there are a lot of people who have different kind of pieces of amending the Constitution, 
different parts of some of these, these de decisions. Um, we're all kind of going after the same thing, ultimately, and that is to try to restore some power to, to ordinary people um, and to diminish the uh, influence of corporate money and um, outside money. But people have some different ideas. And so you may, there may be a number of things introduced uh, out there. And, um, you know, and, it, and, and you know, I, I, I think that, quite frankly, in the, in the short term, um, you know, getting behind uh, our two amendments here uh, doesn't preclude you from supporting something else or, or a combination down the road. You know, as I said, the Democratic Caucus, they supposedly put a group together, you know, to take all the different ideas out there you know, and to, and to listen to people about what is the best approach. I mean, and at some point, you know, questions about, you know, what can get the most votes? What can win? How do we advance the, how do we advance this? How uh, will come into play? But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So, um, you know, uh, you know, over the next few months, you'll see, you may hear about some other amendments that are uh, going to be introduced, but, um, you know, and, and if you'd like them, you certainly urge people to support them. I mean, there may be other amendments that, are just that I might support as well. But I, I think we need to begin somewhere. And this is, to me, a solid place to begin. And also, it would be a solid place to end. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, but again, we're, we're beginning this process. So, you know, the more people that get behind my amendment, the more people that get behind others, it's going to, you know, build the pressure up. So, these may come together at the end. Uh, but we're not at that point yet. Uh, so I would, you know, urge you to, you know, we get these, these are the two, this is the only game in town as of right now. You know, get behind us, help us push it, and, you know, and, and things will develop from there. Before we take uh, one or two last questions, I need to let you know that there are so many people here that the coat rack fell apart. <laughs> so we, all the coats are on a couch somewhere in the other room. So one or two more questions. Just getting hot in just here. A quick, I think I have to call on Ellen. Yeah, just just a quick comment about going back farther. I was speaking to a gentleman here from Hamden before this started. He brought, he went to his select board and brought this up and asked them to take a position on it. The three select board people didn't know what Citizens United was. So, so we do have a lot to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I'm sort of curious uh, as to how the corporate sector is paying attention to this. Yes. And I know that they always stay below the radar when they can. And there uh, the possibility that there are certain corporate players who are actually engaged in opposing this in various and subtle ways. So it sort of brought up the notion in my mind of divestiture. And the people, anybody who has any holdings in, in a publicly traded corporation has some power. And divestiture has you know, historically been a tool of, you know, of people and democracies to exert pressure and, or make it too expensive for a corporation to be engaged in opposing a particular campaign like this. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Les. You know, I just comment that this whole amendment movement, uh, you know, we see as something that's an engine for all these other kinds of reforms. And I think having corporations be held accountable for what they're doing and the divestiture uh, effort is one of them, having shareholder of rights being protected here, so shareholders must approve what corporate management does with general treasury funds. Congressman Capuano has a bill on that. There's efforts, of course, to promote public funding of elections in a lot of states and at the federal level that I know the congressman supports as well. We, we need to have all of these move forward, but the reason why at Free Speech People we're excited about the amendment strategy is we think it provides that overarching frame for what we need to do. Amendments are opportunities to have questions answered on first principles. What are we as a nation? In this case, is it we the people or we the corporations? And when we elevate the debate to that level and have that basic fundamental discussion, it, it will help propel all these other reforms that are so desperately needed as well to protect our democracy. But if we, if we know a particular corporation that is taking a more active role in trying to oppose this, then, you know, I think we, we should talk about ways to make it clear that corporate yeah. and we're not happy. I coach the Human Rights Commission, you know, and, we, you, know, <coughs> you know, I mean, some of these, the best issues have been, have been really helpful. 
you know, get help change our policy in South Africa, help uh, we're pushing people who are investing in Sudan right now uh, that there's a consequence to investing in countries that kill their own people. I mean, so, but I, I appreciate your, your comment. Okay, we'll take one more question. Anyone who feels like okay. I appreciate your efforts to do this because as corporations keep on throwing people away, they keep on cutting the staff, they keep on cutting everything, more and more people are becoming more and more marginalized, more and more people are going being thrown into the dustbin, the buckets of, uh, of society. And when you have all these people who have who have, I go to the unemployment office and I'm just like stunned to see how many people who've never ever been out of work, who've always worked, who have lots of skills, who have good educations, who have all kinds of things, are literally being tossed into a bucket and being ignored. And when you have all these people who are standing in line with the voter suppression situations that are going on, where people are standing in the cold like for hours and hours at a time to vote, et cetera, et cetera. It's quite messy, and I appreciate your efforts in this regard. Thank you. And, and, and let me just close with one thing. Somebody gave me for Christmas a book of Howard Sims' writings. <laughs> <laughs> so I was paging through it. And he does the, the, during one interview, he, 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 he talks about, in the people's history, he makes reference to uh, an instance uh, when Mar Marlon Fitzwater was the uh, was the press secretary to Reagan, Reagan, and it was like a uh, and and uh, Marlon Fitzwater was asked by somebody uh, about a uh, fundraiser, like forty thousand dollars a person <laughs> fundraiser, you know, and he and uh, Fitzwater says, uh, you know, it, it, so why would anyone pay forty thousand dollars? And Fitzwater said to get access to uh, to power, and to get access to the president, and. Uh, Follow question the reporter asked was, well, how does someone who doesn't have forty thousand dollars get access to power or to the president? And Fitzwater's response was, well, they're going to have to find other means. And look, that's the way it, it's, it's working, unfortunately. Um, and you know what we're trying to do here, I think, is uh, you know is, is create a people's movement here that is about you know putting the power back where it belongs with with people. And uh, it shouldn't be viewed as radical or as controversial. In fact, all the stuff that the Supreme Court is doing should be viewed as radical and controversial. And what we're doing is we're adhering to the wishes of our founders. Um, and uh, you know, and I, I again, yeah, I mean, I, I, John has taught me a lot, um, and uh, about the Constitution more than I ever thought, uh, more than I ever you know thought existed. Uh, but the bottom line, we're on the right side of this. Those of us who work in this, we're on the right side of history. And hopefully, we move history quick, but sometimes it takes a little while longer. Uh, but as John said, as Paul Wellstone said, you know, you can't win a fight unless you pick one. And this is a, this is a fight worth, worth having. And uh, I look forward to working with all of you, and uh, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you.